My name is Angela and I'm a college student at USC. Today, I'm going to teach you about fractions. So I want to ask you all a question. How many parts do you think make up this one whole circle? Is it two parts? Is it four parts? The real answer is that there are infinite ways to split something up. It just depends on how we want to split it. So let's look at this square for example. There are many different ways we can cut this square up, just like the circle. In two parts, in three parts, in four parts, and so on. You see, when you split something up, you have to find out how many parts you're taking over how many parts there are total. And these parts go above and below a line respectively to make a fraction. So here we want to take three parts and there are four total parts. So the number of parts we're taking is three, which goes on top of the fraction. And the number of total parts is four, which goes on the bottom. So the fraction is three fourths or three over four. Fractions give us a way to write parts of a whole. As we can see, they're made up of two numbers, the number of top and the number on bottom. The fancy term for the number on top, the number of parts we're taking, is the numerator. And the fancy term for the number of parts on the bottom, total parts, is the denominator. Let's look at another example. Say we have six brownies. We love brownies and we want to eat most of them, but let's save one for our friend. So we eat five brownies. What is the fraction of the brownies we ate? Eating five of the six brownies means that the numerator, the number of parts we're eating, here is five. And the denominator, which goes on the bottom, is the number of parts in total, which is six brownies. So the fraction is five over six. All right, now let's talk about equivalent fractions. On the left, we have one half. On the right, we have two fourths. So which one is bigger? That's actually a trick question. They are both the same. As you can see here, when we put them together, they take up the same amount of the square, even though they seem to be different fractions. We call these equivalent fractions because they're equal. So now let's look at some more examples. This pizza is split into eight equal parts and you want to eat three slices of it. What is the fraction of pizza you ate? Good job. The answer is three eighths or three over eight. The numerator is three since we ate three slices and the denominator is eight since there are eight total slices. Here's another example. Say your friend has nine cookies, but since he's really nice, he gives you five cookies. What is the fraction of cookies that he gave you? Nice job. The answer is five ninths. The numerator is five, the number of cookies he gave you and the denominator is nine, the total amount of cookies he had. Here's a bonus question. What fraction of the cookies does your friend have left? Good job. The answer is four ninths. As you can see, he has four of the nine cookies. So why are fractions important? Fractions might sound boring, but they're actually very important in daily life. I bet you use fractions without even knowing. When you want to split a snack with your friend, you say things like, can I have half? That would be you, you using the fraction one half. You can also use fractions when you check the time during the day. For example, because there are 24 hours in one day, one hour would be 1 24th of an entire day. Fractions are also used in shopping. For example, when you go to the mall and you see clothes that are 50% off, that means the on-sale price you pay 
is one half of the original price. All right, as a quick review of what we learned today, fractions allow us to represent portions of a whole. Fractions have a numerator, which is a number above the line that tells us how many parts we're taking, and the denominator, the number of parts below the line that tells us how many parts there are in total. I hope you all had fun learning about fractions. 